So, Tommy, do you like mushrooms? It depends what kind of mushrooms we're talking about. <laughs> do you like the kind that could turn you into a zombie? No. I I wouldn't want those mushrooms. I actually don't like the mushrooms you eat for food either. So I am only after a very specific kind of mushroom. You know what I'm saying? Ah, maybe that's what this is all about, people hallucinating the zombies. Let's touch on this. Let's Let's do that. Greetings, I am Alanis Maximus, and this is my co-host, Tommy A. West. Feels weird saying that. <laughs> you know, I'm doing what you do. Hey, yeah. See, it feels I'm good, not, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Even though it's a podcast, you're like... Just waving. And then it makes me feel... Um... So as you can tell, brand new... <laughs> Brand new show. Oh, forget dickhead. about it. Oh, right. Dios mio. Ay, ay, ay. This is welcome to Televerse Reviews. Uh, this is a new series we're doing. We're going to be reviewing uh, television shows, giving an individual score of 0 to 50 each. Then at the end, combining that score and playing off either as a whole series or episode by episode, depending on how many series there are uh, in the... Or when it's released. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, basically ranking them in the end based on our combined score. So we're not ranking and reviewing, we're scoring. And what's this episode about today? This episode is about the the hot-off-the-press Last of Us episode one. Now, it's going to be an interesting one because I haven't played the games. I've only seen people playing them on Twitch kind of YouTube, whatever. So it's kind of a here and there kind of thing. I've got a vague idea like I of the characters but and the story, but not a solid one. Um, I'm more watching it at this point as a horror fan, whereas we've got Tomye here, that side, <laughs> uh, who is obviously PS2. He's played them. He knows them. So it's going to be interesting to see how we go here and, and what we think. And... Seeing as we're reversing the roles for this, this this show, how about you give me your thoughts? I think that they handled the show, the, the property very well so far from episode one. I think that they've stayed very faithful to the game. They did add in some extra things that I'm sure maybe even were planned for the game or written in script wise, but realized that it was just too much narrative, too much story at the start to get driven in because I've heard some, you know, uh, if you haven't seen this episode of this show, by the way, and you're watching this review, like don't do that. Please go watch the episode before you watch this review. Um, like at the start, like his daughter is killed off very quickly in the show. So imagine that his daughter is killed off quicker than that. And that's what happens in the game. So I feel like you have more of a chance to get to love this character and understand this character more than you did in the game. Um, like, even though the game, it still makes you feel and, like, sad and stuff about her death, I feel like the TV show makes it even more sad because you get to know her just that little bit longer. It helps, you know? So I think yeah. that they fill out the sort of pieces that sort of feel missing or rushed out nicely in this show and i feel like they majority of it's cast well i'm still not sold on who plays ali um and i think that the tone they went for is very great um i like some little little, uh, little subtleties they had in the back like in the background and things like that and i also like when she was over at like the adler's place at the start how in the background you saw the grandma behind sort of like Twitching, doing something weird in the chair, and you could tell that's when things were about to change, sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I really liked. Yeah, it seems to me like they're following the video game nearly beat for beat. And I pretty much, again, I'm not going to say too much because if you haven't played the games, I don't want to spoil the show for you, especially if you're watching the show and haven't played the games. 
I definitely don't want to spoil the end of the whole season for you. But I have a feeling that it is going to end. The, the first season will end where the game, the first game finishes. You know what I mean? So yes. that's my thoughts. I think it's great. I think so far it's great. It looks good. I think so far it's probably one of the most well-adapted and faithful video game TV adaptions I've seen so far. But that's often an 80-minute episode. So I can't be too judgy yet because... Who knows? We could get to a slog of episode three or four or five where it just drags and drags and talking and monologue. So we will see, I guess. We will see. But right now, a lot of promise. That's why. Yeah. Ah, very nice. Very nice. I am. Um, I have similar thoughts. Like I've seen, obviously, the the intro of of the game on on YouTube being kind of. Um, I see probably not the very very start. I've seen where. Um, Joel's kid get shot and they tumble and whatever. Uh, and yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think it was a good touch. I don't think it would have worked translated if they didn't have that character development. Um, Cause you don't have that when you're playing a game, you're like, Oh yeah, come on, I'm going to play. Whereas when you're watching a show and especially if you're not a gamer and you're watching this with a fresh set of eyes, even fresher than mine, you're going to go like, Oh, who cares? And it just kind of becomes fan service. So I reckon that it was good that they did that building there. Um, yeah, and also, also, I think that um, I think that I feel like they really nailed like the feeling of like how things. It happened very quickly, but I feel like they nailed like the things of like just things were normal, but there were slight things like that they were noticing. Like yeah, kind of like oh, in wherever it was. Um, I think the uh, can't remember. Sorry, Indonesia, I can't remember your capital, but Kuala, no, it wasn't Kuala. Somewhere in another country, there was a report, and they're like, "Oh, oh, what's going on there?" And yeah, and, South then, America and, and also just like the jets flying over every now and then, and things, and you're like, "What's going on?" You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's really interesting too, looking at this post-pandemic. You know what I mean? Because, mm. like, I don't know how far they believed that this COVID thing would go the rest of the world, like, government-wise. But, like, there had to be some governments out there that literally thought that this is what we were going to face. Something, not That's zombies, true. but I'm thinking, like, that level of catastrophe and that level of the disappearance of, like, the population and things like 100%. that. 100%. You know I mean? there's, there's actually, there's... Actually, the, the whole starting spiel when they're talking about the fungus in the world. I, I really like that intro, dude. They 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 didn't have that in the show in the game. Um, that's, that's um that was really that, cool. That's a real theory to some doctors though, which is is unsettling. And when you think the world is getting warmer, it's I'm going to say it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's enough for if some people are saying some doctors are saying this. Then that's a little scary, and I think they're playing on that there. Um, yeah, Do you know what's uh, really true is that the, the whole Tommy getting, from what I remember, the whole Tommy going to jail thing and him having to get bailed out, I don't remember if that's in the game or not, but I don't think it is. I think that he, I think that Joel, something, I can't remember, but I just remember like him and Joel, like, running into the house together and being like, we got to go, like, let's get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, and hopping in the car and then doing all of that, um, saying where they're going to go and all heading to the highway and all this shit. But like, I don't remember the whole jail thing. So I can't be sure about that, but that was, I felt like a different sort of take or answer as to why, where Tommy was at the time and that sort of thing. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's another thing I actually really like to touch as well when they um, when Joel killed the neighbor, Mrs. Adler or whatever it was, and when he's driven off and hit the other people, the other neighbors came out and like, Christ, Joel, what are you doing? It's like, it couldn't have, I like that little bit where it's like, not everyone's in a panic yet. They've kind of just run yeah, out. No, and not Joel like, run people yeah. 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 And um, I, you totally can see as well, as I said just before, seeing it post pandemic, um, you kind of see the whole. They're not allowed to leave town because no one knows if this thing is going to spread further and further and further. And that's what leads to his daughter's demise. You know what I mean? Um, 
they did that very, very uh, faithfully to the game. Um, I do almost feel like though the whole part where they're driving through the town and they're like running through people, like running through people, and then like have to reverse because everyone starts running towards them and that jet, jet crashes behind them and all that. I almost feel like that had a lot more zombies and them running through back alleys and like squeezing through gates and like hands of zombies getting to them and like that sort of thing before they got out into the field where they were greeted by the SWAT, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I don't know about that, but this could just be memories of a completely different fucking game. I mean, think about how many games we have of zombies out there. And I've yeah. said to you, I've said to you as well, The Last of Us, great game. I'm not going to sit here and tell everyone that it's a shit game because it's not my cup of tea, which it really isn't. Um, even though I love Naughty Dog, it's not my kind of game. I love the story. I love the graphics. I love the environments. I love the elements. But I get bored of the whole zombie genre thing a lot very, very quickly. And I think that this game is worth picking up and playing, but it's definitely not worth playing again. And so for me, for me anyway, I had my experience with The Last of Us Part 1 and I enjoyed it and I really ha loved it and I'm happy to leave it there. So for me, I haven't played this game since maybe the remaster version of it on PS4 where I might have played the opening half an hour where again and then didn't play any more of it because I was like, nah, I'm done with this. And to be in complete truthfulness, I have made it up to the exact same spot in The Last of Us Part 2 twice and <laughs> from that point onwards have decided i don't like that game yeah, <laughs> yeah it was and a mixed so, review because it was, it was open world um it, it's not open world it's not it's not it's it's op it's very open spaces so picture tomb raider of the, uh, the yes. remake, how there's open space that's what they're talking about when it comes to open world with the last of us part two there is a seattle area where you can like run around all of Seattle, and that's the part man, where I get to because there's a map and you've got to, like, go through each part of the – okay, so you look at the map and then you're like, oh, i got to go to this fucking building. So you go to this building, you clear it out. you got to sneak past people doing stealth and all this bullshit. And you've got to make it through Seattle. I usually make it just pass through or something, and then I get to the part where you're, like, about to confront your the antagonist or whatever, you know, protagonist. Um, and then – that I find out that there's apparently like another 12 hours or something after that. And I'm just like, man, I've already done like 15 hours on this or whatever it is, you know, and I'm like, I'm bored, you know? <laughs> so I'm really interested to see what they're going to do though, because we've heard mumblings out of Naughty Dog that the next game they are indeed working on is fucking Last of Us Part 3, which is something I didn't want. Um, yeah. But um, I wonder what they're going to do because if season one ends where the game ends, and then season two picks up where the second game picks up. What do I do that if it's successful? Are they going to just end it? Are they going to, are they going to like do like sort of what comic book adaptations can do and stuff where they can like do like a prelude or like do something of what happened in between the gap between game one and game two, you know, for the series? It's kind of like The Walking Dead, like, you know what I mean? Or yeah. what they, what they did for Game of Thrones, where the books weren't written, you know. What yeah, I that's mean? what I was about to say. It is HBO, so they might even do this is a TV show, and then I don't know. But um, on, on the subject of zombies as well, I think one thing I like about it, like I'm not so much games, but most of all zombie horror, like I've The Walking Dead zombie horror movies. It's played and played and played. One thing I do like about this is it's not all focused around day one. It's focused mainly 20 years after of the apocalypse kind of thing, which not a lot and, of people and, and it's not focused solely on zombies. It's very like it's got zombies in it, and that's what the that's what the infection does, but it's focused on the relationship of Joel and Ali and their adventure and where he has to get her to and what it all means. And like that's what draws me in the zombies is the annoying part of the games and stuff to me. Like, <laughs> especially like the clicker ones where you have to like sneak past them because they're different and every zombie has a different trait and like there's ones that will sense you if you walk really quickly so you have to see there's ones that are like blind and like they make weird noises when they hear you when they turn around they go like you know what i mean like and it's just like i i, I 
I guess get bored of the zombie stuff. Like I like the narrative. I like the graphics. I like the Absolutely. witty marks back and forth between Joel and Ali. I like their relationship in the first game, even in the second game at points until spoilers. I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, like I like everything that surrounds the zombies and the clickers and stuff. And when it gets to those, I just wish it was something else. <laughs> I, wish anything, I wish it was anything but zombies because yes. I'd care more. But like, I, I just think raptors. Yeah. Think about how many. Think, think, I want you to do me something right now, Lars. List off as many zombie games as you can. I can do many. Dead Island. The Last of Us. Uh, Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Back for Blood, Left for Dead, Left for Dead 2, The Last of Us 2, State of Decay. On and on we can go. What, what's the other one? What's the other one? That just, uh... Dead Island. <laughs> no, no. What's the other one? What's the other one? Um, The one where you parkour, run around during the day. Oh, um, I've, I've got it on my shelf right there. And they've got um, a new one coming out as well. It's like a number two. Dying Light. Dying Light. They've already got Dying Light 2 out. That's right. So yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. And wait, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. You know what I mean? Undead Nightmare. We could keep going for a while, I think. <laughs> it was really good, man. Uh, uh, yes. Was it Zombie U? We could see, dude, that's what we should do. Is just like sit here one day and make a super cut of every zombie related game. Yeah. <laughs> um. Dead Island Riptide. <laughs> And a safe Christmas. Um, Home Alone. No. That was. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's a movie. <laughs> yeah. But um, overall, I'm, I'm, another thing I wanted to touch on was um, the, the cast changing. I'm, I'm a bit biased because I'm a big fan of Pedro Pascal. I think he looks pretty right, but. I found it interesting how different, like, Bella Ramsey is a great actress. Like, I wasn't a big Game of Thrones fan, but I watched it. I saw her in it. I knew who she was. But she couldn't look further from being Ellie. Like, attitude, maybe she'll nail it. I don't know. I haven't really seen enough of the games. But I believe she could probably... I don't even think she nailed it in that regard, man. Because (laughs) I noticed at the end, like, the part where he, like, runs into the dude that shot his daughter and then he beats her him over the head to death and she's kind of looking on with like whoa like this is sick and ali was not like that to begin with at the show she uh, in the game she was like was that necessary that was full <laughs> on it. he's like i'm sorry kid that you have to see this sort of thing you know what i mean and in this yeah. one she's like she's almost looks like she's on the side like going, yeah fuck his ass up you know what i mean like, <laughs> i don't know i don't think it's a good casting decision but look playstation have made some questionable casting decisions yes i mean um tom uh, fuck what's his name tom holland as uh as uh yeah and then mark Wahlberg is fucking sully (laughs) that's the weirdest one because you know what mark Wahlberg looks more like nathan drake than tom holland does That's an interesting thing because they're both Naughty Dog things. I wonder if there's someone in, in the casting crew who was like, well, they got away with it. Hey, this guy looks nothing like the, the person in the game. That They're perfect. Yeah. I'm you just glad the, the dog survived as well. The second I saw a dog, I'm like, don't do it. Don't you hurt that dog. And they and didn't I'm hurt so the sick. dog. I'm so sick to death of movies and television feeling like they have to kill off dogs and animals and stuff. It's like we... We don't want to see that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Good acting role from the dog as well. He was a good boy or girl. Keep talking. Sorry, man. One second. <laughs> so anyway, I feel I feel we're coming to the, the crunch point um, where we do tally up the scores. But most of all, that dog. That dog was a good dog. What was his name? Milo? I think so. I think so. Otis? He deserves all the pats, all the Tritos, all of them. Dude, uh, dude, did you know there's like a wild, a wild E. Coyote movie coming out? Really? But it's called Wild E. Coyote versus Acme, and <laughs> he's suing 
he's suing Acme for all the dodgy products that they've sold him. You know what? I will watch that movie. <laughs> oh, I'm a I'm an for it, man. It looks it looks hilarious because he's suing him because he's just like, I'm sick of these rockets exploding on me and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. cool hey, on that note, I think we should come to the crunch time. And as I said earlier at the start of the show, we're going to have two scores from a score of Morbius to 50. Morbius being the lowest. No, actually, no, 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 no. Zero is the lowest numerical value. But if something is that bad that you can't put a number to it, it is a Morbius. That's what we'll do. I don't know how that add together, but that's what look, we'll do. Look, as, the show, as the show progresses, I'm sure we'll that's fire it. out, firing out those kinks. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And uh, I guess we'll go once again in, in theme. Uh, you started off with your thoughts, so let's go with your score and why you come to that. This would have been... An almost perfect score, just simply because they did great. They did a great job with putting it into game, a game into TV format. Um, this would have been a fifty for me if it had been everything that I thought it was going to be. Um, the things that let me down with it is the casting decision of Ali. I just can't get used to it. It jars me every time. It's jarring, especially for something. That <laughs> For something I've known since what when the game was released in two thousand and I don't even know when the game was released. Was it like thirteen? It's a long time ago. I'll, I'll say twenty thirteen. Either way, that is a long time to get to know the face and a character in a game, and then to have someone come along that looks zero percent like this person. <laughs> it's jarring. And the other thing I will say is that. I no, you know what? That's really my only complaint. Really, I think the CG was done well for a TV show. HBO always seem to nail it out of the park with their shows. They they very rarely fail in what they try to succeed with. So yeah, it's a forty for me. Ah, nice, nice. I am going to be in a very similar spot. I um, it doesn't. I don't think it bothers me as much as as you with the the casting, but the premise of it bothers me because I know I'll be where you were if I played the games and also just knowing that even the limited amount I have of just from the onlooker from this point for the games, I know what she looks like and that isn't it. And it's unnecessary. I didn't, didn't really like it. I think they could have done better. I think they slotted her in there because she was a kid that was in, in game of Thrones and everyone's like, wow. And I think it was a bit of a draw card going, Hey, we put her in here for a featuring role rather than, more of a supporting one um so yeah that's that that docks some points off um the only other i guess grimace i had is i felt it kind of it it drooped in the middle a little bit but i think it's because it was such a long episode i was i feel like going, i feel like it definitely got the like was very dialogue heavy in the middle middle um yeah. and as i said to you i think that like the reason it was 80 minutes was because they wanted to like get to a point in the story where they could leave it on like a cliffhanger for you to get to like the second episode. So I think what they did was this was like meant to be a like the first episode was supposed to be ended at some point halfway through, then that next bit would have picked up. But I think what they decided to do was because of the slow nature of the middle of it was mm. combine the two episodes to make it one so that that slow nature felt like a part of that's just how it's going to flow that the opening, you know, because if you would have separated that and made it a second episode, I think it would have been, everyone would have been like, this is really boring compared to the first episode. You know what I mean? So Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's what makes that's, sense that's, to That's me. a good point. Um, yes, um, I'll, I'll also come in and I'll go, I'll give that, I'll also sit that and say, let's say 41. So, 41? Um, now, this is going to be something we'll do. Well, let's go 81. 81. And we're going to bring that up on screen right about now. There's not much to see. Just that. 81. 81 out of 100. Everyone just has to know this is a 100 point scale show. We're going to be doing 80s. And this is in the 80s. Like, so, you know, like, it's like looking it up on Rotten Tomatoes. It gets like an 84% or a 45% or whatever. So that's the easiest way to kind of, I guess, describe the way we're point, doing the point system. So, yeah, yeah. No, and if we both don't want to give it any points, it's just a straight up fucking Morbius. And you don't want to be a double Morbius. 
Oh, dude, being <laughs> double negative. That's almost like that's almost worse than being a child offender. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, I hope you've enjoyed what we've done. I've enjoyed this. Tommy, have you enjoyed this? I have. I'm really excited to do this as a new show. Um, I'm really excited as well for Ryan to see what we're doing in the Ranked and Review Goes to Hell because I think it's good that we're bringing this show out now because people still get their fix of what our original Ranked and Reviewed show was in a different, with just with TV and sort of thing, in a different way of doing it. And Ranked and Review Goes to Hell is going into a whole new level that I don't think anyone has tried to do or is going to try to do on YouTube, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. Yes, it will be coming at you soon. When we fucking get when we get it, <laughs> when we work out how to make videos, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we want to do. We want to get, bring you quality over quantity with this, and that's what it's going to be. And you will thank us for it. It's like, but at least twice as good as what HBO did in the first episode of, of The Last of Us with the Siege, the green screen, I reckon. I hate HBO. Just fucking come at us with an offer. Who are you? <laughs> come, at us with, come at us with an offer and we will move to your channel. Yeah. Simple. We'll do all the work. Yep. The then we'll rank you. <laughs> the show no, wait, we'll supervise. We, we're not going to do the work. You do the work, HBO. We'll just supervise and go, hmm. No, but I'm saying we're in charge of all their shows. Yeah. And none of them are going to be as good. <laughs> because, because all we're in it for is the payday. That's it. <laughs> uh, let's wrap this fucking shit up. Yes. Well, I've been Alanis Maximus. This has been Tommy A. West, and you have been you. So keep on being you and reaching for those stars, because that's what it's about. We'll Probably see you on, on goodbye. And we'll see you on episode two of Televerse Review. Don't let me, Alanis. Peace. Also, Pop Vultures is coming out. More Pop Vultures. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Watch that. Peace. Peace.